Hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. Hi, Karen. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Carlos. How are you today, people? How's everything? I'm very tired. You're very tired? Really? I guess. Yeah. You had a, a hard day at work? Very hard today. Ooh, really? Yeah, I man, it must be difficult, right? Especially these days that are basically the, the end of the month. So it would be difficult for you, right? Super difficult. But anyways, the good thing is that you have already finished uh, with, uh, with the day. And uh, we already like just, just to have this class. And in two more hours, you basically are going to be resting. That's, that's, that's the cool part of it, right? That you're going that's to rest. Really yeah, I mean. Okay, cool. Uh, in the meantime, so good evening for the ones who are getting connected right now. Uh, welcome to this video conference number three. Today, we're going to have a very interesting topic that is going to be related to one of... Uh, I cannot say like topics, but it's going to be like really, really interesting. It's a new structure actually that okay. probably, probably you have heard about. And uh, and let's see if uh, we okay keep the same progress that we have been keeping with the pre previous uh you know like basically the previous topics. So if you remember in the class number one, we were talking about infinitives. Yesterday, we were talking about gerunds that actually we're going to do a short feedback related to that, right, to the gerunds. And uh, that's pretty much what we have been uh, like doing, you know. And we're going to continue uh, doing for the rest of, uh, you know, like the, the, the sections. All right. I'm going to start with the attendance list. It's 802. So I'm going to start with the attendance list and then we are going to start with the previous feedback you know, from, from, from the topic and the new topic that we are going to introduce today. Uh, Andres Joel. Present. Ah, okay, very good. Let's see, Carlos Mauricio. Sure. Okay, nice. Uh, Cindy Melanie. Cindy Melanie, all right, she's not here. Uh, Stephanie Michel. All right, Michel, Michel, yeah, she's there, but I think she's the one that is in. Right, give me one second. <laughs> that man is yet, yet uh, in the work. All right, anyways, let's move. Ioania Jamilet. Present teacher. Ah, okay, very good. Let's continue. Jacqueline Patricia. Okay, she's not here yet. Uh, Joanna Sarai. Present teacher. Ah, okay, very good. Uh, Jorge Alberto. She's not here. Give me one second. All right, let's continue. Jorge is not here. Jose Elgar, is he here? Jose Elgar. Okay, neither. Neither him. Juan Emanuel. Okay, no here. Uh, Juan Gilberto. All right, Gilberto is getting connected. Okay. Okay, Julio Alberto. No, it is weird. Julio is not here. He casi nunca falta. And there are three classes and he's not here. Julio Cesar. Present. Okay, very good. Let's continue. Karen Beatriz. Present. Okay, perfect. Let's move. Carla Lisette. Present teacher. 
Okay, very good. Raquel Stephanie. Present. Excellent. Veronica Arely. Present. Okay, perfect. Let's continue. Wendy Jamilet. Present. Ah, okay, she's there. All right, nice. Let's continue. William Ernesto. William, William, I guess he's not here. Let's move on. Xiomara Elizabeth. Xiomara, okay, she's not here. Mm, Carlos Jose. Present. Excellent. And the last one, Reinaldo Chavez. Okay, he's not here. All right. Uh, if you remember, as I was saying, uh, yesterday we were discussing about a very interesting topic, by the way, and they were the ING forms of the verb after some prepositions. All right. How do you call to that ING form plus the verb? ¿Cómo se llama a esas formas de los verbos cuando colocamos ING? Que mencionábamos ayer. What is the name of that structure? The, the continuous, the present continuous. Okay, all right. We can put it as present continuous. Eh, pero ¿cómo son llamados en sí los verbos que llevan ING? Porque el present continuous, si recuerdan, mencionábamos que es cuando llevamos el verbo to be uh, con el present continuous. Uh, bueno, básicamente el present continuous es la estructura en la cual ustedes tienen el subject, el verbo to be y el verbo en ING. Right? Y eso indicaba una acción en el instante, right? Mencionábamos, por ejemplo, si yo digo, I am teaching English, es una acción que la estoy haciendo en el instante, right? Entonces, eso se le conocía como present continuous. Pero les mencionaba que la estructura que estábamos viendo ayer, right? It was different in comparison to that one. Era un tanto diferente. ¿Por qué? Porque simplemente colocábamos el verbo en ING, right? Y no necesariamente ese verbo estaba hablando sobre una acción en el instante. Ok, ¿cómo se llamaba a esa, a esa, a esa función cuando se le agrega ING al verbo? ¿Cómo se le llamaba a esa estructura? Let me see if you remember, people. Did you remember? Hmm. Uh -huh. You were escaping last night right in the class. Mm -hmm. Todos bien calladitos. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ya sé quién nos va a salvar. Carla los va a salvar. Ay, Carla. ¿Cómo se le conoce, Carla, a los verbos cuando le agregamos ING? Yo entrando iba, dice Carla. Este. Te voy a dar una pista, Carla. Comienza con G y termina con O la palabra. Con G y termina con O. Yes. Compañeritos, por favor, ayúdenme. Auxilio. Okay, okay. Carlos, repeat again that one. Gerundio. 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 In English is gerunds. There you go. A eso Gracias. Se como gerundio, right? Cuando el verbo lleva ing en sí, right? Y no necesariamente, remember, no necesariamente el verbo está indicando una acción en el instante, okay? If you remember the class. From yesterday, we were talking about that one, okay? There you go. Okay, cool. Now, let's start with some things that we were uh, missing yesterday from the structure that we were discussing. If you remember, we did not finish basically the structure that we were discussing about. So give me one second. I'm gonna put the manual. Uh, that was on page. 13, yeah, 13. 
14 actually. Okay, like this one. Okay, let me see. Okay, let's let's start over. Uh, I'm gonna put this and I'm gonna put it into the video. Okay, that's this this part. Check this out, people. Yesterday, remember, we were practicing the structures about be responsible to, be in charge of, right? Be uh, accountable for, okay? So if you remember those structures after some prepositions, and in this case, the prepositions are of, for, okay? Basically, we put a gerund or an ing of the verb. And this activity was missing. Listen. What are we going to do in this activity? Esta actividad la vamos a hacer así a modo de retroalimentación conforme a lo que estuvimos viendo ayer antes de, de pasar al siguiente tema. Ok, check this out, people. Acá, si ven en la parte de su manual, tienen una... Uh, ok, this is an organizational chart. Ok, an organizational chart que creo que en sus expresas ustedes los pueden llamar como un organigrama, right? En donde aparece el general manager y luego después del general manager que es el, el, el por así decirlo, el jefe, ok? Uh, it, it comes to the auditor, then we got the sales department, computer department, y aquí pues se dividen básicamente todos los departamentos, over here, todos los departamentos de una empresa, por así decirlo, ok? This one, this one. Quality control inspector, floor manager, financial department, computer department, sales department. Pero en sus empresas, obviamente, hay más, hay más departamentos, right? Okay, like this one. Uh, por ejemplo, está el de human resources department, el departamento de, de, you know, like the recursos humanos and everything. And in here, we have, we got some, some extra divisions. Check this out. The safety engineer, all right? And then after the safety engineer belongs to the supervisor. And the supervisor is in charge of the mach machine uh, operators, assemblers, and truck drivers. Look at this. And the safety engineer is also in charge of maintaining shift and the maintenance personnel. So, básicamente, esto, esto, esto comprende como un organizational chart o un organigrama. Okay. ¿Para qué estoy mostrando esto? ¿O por qué lo estoy mostrando? Porque acá, over here, lo vamos a necesitar. Check this out. Dice la primera oración acá. ¿Qué vamos a hacer primero? Vamos a ver el organizational chart over here. Y acá, si ven ustedes, tenemos unos verbos en paréntesis. All right. In here. Estos verbos me los van a colocar de manera adecuada después de las preposiciones que aparecen acá. Ok. And here, para completar básicamente la pregunta que aparece acá, ok? For example, it says, who is responsible for? Acá, ¿cómo sería? ¿Cómo sería que va el verbo acá? Sería I ING. Ajá. Por... Ah, ok, very good. So, in this case, who is responsible for? Supervising. The machine operators. There you go. Okay. Cool. Y así sucesivamente vamos a hacer con las demás preguntas. Okay. This is just asking questions about who is in charge or who is responsible or accountable for an action. Okay. Cool. Vamos a dar un par de minutos entonces para que puedan terminar ustedes de completar estas preguntas. Okay. Y luego vamos a discutir un poco sobre las respuestas. Okay. Let's go over that and let me know when you finish. We're not the, the, I mean, open up the PDF so you can see the, 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 the chart, the organizational chart, and we can do this activity, okay? Just let me know when you finish, okay?
All right, let me know when you finish this, okay? Finished, teacher. Okay, perfect. Who else has finished? Alguien más ya terminó? Somebody else that has finished already? Let me see, how many people is connected right now? 14. Okay. All right, cool. Let's let's go over it and let's see what you got in here. Karen, can you please help me out with number two? Read it uh, completely, please. He's in charge of checking the quality of the products. Okay, who is in charge of checking? All right, the quality of the products. There you go. Carlos Gamero, read number three. Who is responsible for repairing the problem of the machines? Of the machines. All right, there you go. Who is responsible for repairing the problems of the machines? There you go. Julio Cesar, read number four. Who is accountable for stealing the products? Ah, okay, very good. Wendy, read number five. Who is in charge of assisting the assembler? Ah, okay, very good. Who is in charge of assisting the assemblers? All right, cool. And uh, the last one, Veronica, let's finish it. Who is accountable for managing the whole operation? The whole operation. Okay, cool. ¿Qué significa whole people? ¿Alguien me puede decir qué significa la palabra whole? Completo o entero. Ok, completo, entero o por en este caso, toda. Ok, toda. The whole operation, toda la operación. Right? There you go. Ok, cool. Ahora que ya tienen esa parte, vamos a hacer algo. Vámonos al organizational chart. Over here. Y dice la primera pregunta. Ok. Who is responsible for supervising the machine operators? Ok. The machine operators. ¿Quién es el responsable de supervisar? Ok. A los operadores de máquina. De acuerdo al, al, al chart que tenemos ahí. ¿Quién será? Safety engineer. Safety engineer. El supervisor. Ajá. Uh -huh. There you go. In this case, it's the supervisor. Right? That's the one. Es como el jefe inmediato, por así decirlo. Okay, the supervisor. Now, next. Who is in charge of checking the quality of the products? Sería quality control inspector. Ah, okay, very good. Quality control inspector. Let's put it there, right? Quality control inspector. There you go. Next one, it says, who is responsible for repairing the problems of the machine? Maintenance shift. Maintenance shift? Okay, very good, the maintenance shift. Okay. Okay, very good. Next, it says, who is accountable for selling the products? Who is accountable for selling the products? De acuerdo al, 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 al diagrama que tenemos ahí. Who is responsible for doing that? Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Sales department. Exactly, right? El departamento de ventas. Sales department. Okay, cool. Next, who is in charge of assisting the assemblers? Sería assemblers. No, listen, listen, listen. Who is in charge of assisting the assemblers? ¿Quién está a cargo de asistir a los ensambladores? Uh -huh. No pueden ser de assembler, porque ellos son los ensambladores. Computer department. Do you think that's the computer department? Do you think? ¿Qué piensan los demás? I'm checking. Driver. El mismo supervisor. In that case, it has to be the supervisor. Exactly, right? That's the supervisor. Okay, there you go. And the next one. Who is accountable for managing the whole operation? Okay, give me one second. To answer this one, let's go a little bit. No, 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 no. Just one second. We're gonna go a little bit up. And you find it there, over here. That one is. The general. Manager, this is the one, okay? Who is in charge of the whole operation, okay? Why is in charge of the whole operation? Because it's the one that is in the top, okay? Doing everything, right? That's the general manager. All right, this is just the, the, the organizational chart, but what uh, really matters for me is the way how you deal with the verbs in ing over here okay so this is this was just a little bit of uh you know like feedback from the main topic that we were discussing yesterday Bien, entonces esto era parte de eh, la pequeña retroalimentación que íbamos a hacer sobre el tema de la clase pasada okay now we're gonna jump into the uh, topic for today's class give me one second Oh yeah, this is. Give me one second. It doesn't appear there. The presentation doesn't appear over here. I am in there. Okay, cool. So, as I told you in this video conference number two, three, the main topic that we're going to be discussing about the topic, you know, is going to be the passive voice. Just to start, have you heard about this topic before? ¿Alguna vez habían escuchado este tema anteriormente? La voz pasiva, la passive voice. Any of you? ¿Alguno había escuchado sobre este tema? ¿O esta es la primera vez? This is the first time. First time. Mm, okay. Sí, lo había escuchado el, el, el tema, pero no, el contenido, ya no recuerdo el contenido. No, nah, ok, cool. So we're going to be discussing about that. Actually, it's going to be a pretty, pretty, pretty simple topic. All right, cool. Let's start over. Uh, let's start with the class agenda for tonight, for the rest of the class. We got the review from the previous class. That's what we did with the, the exercises before. We're gonna have the introduction to the passive voice. 
we're going to provide some examples. You are going to give me some examples. Then we are going to practice a conversation in the manual related to the passive voice. And then we are going to complete some exercises in the manual. Now we're going to finish the class with those exercises. Okay. So this is pretty much that we have for the rest of the class. Okay. Now let's move on. Let's start over with the passive voice. Okay. Listen up. We have a short definition about this. Veronica, can you please help me out reading this definition? Use the passive voice to um, I no conozco esa palabra. Emphasize. Emphasize that the actions are more important than the doors. Doors. So, Okay, Dark. or subjects, all right? Dars in this case is basically significa los, los que hacen la acción, por así decirlo, all right? That's the dars, or subject, entre, entre, entre paréntesis, por así decirlo. Okay, look at this. Basically, we divide the sentences in two different sentences. Básicamente nosotros, inclusive en español, solemos eh, practicar o solemos usar este tema que se llama la voz pasiva okay, en algunas situaciones en algunas maneras en cómo nosotros hablamos All right. en inglés tenemos dos maneras de oraciones o dos formas de oraciones All right. se clasifican como active voice en passive voice Te voy a explicar antes de poner la, la otra información que traigo acá check this out en una active voice ok Look at this. Active voice. Like this. Okay? Así. Voz activa. ¿A qué se refiere esto? All right. Look. When we talk about an active voice, generally, in here, we are talking about, look, a normal sentence. We have subject. Okay? Plus verb plus complement, ¿ok? En la active voice, básicamente nosotros lo que hacemos es enfatizar lo, o poner más atención a lo que el sujeto hace, ¿ok? ¿Cómo así? Check this out. I'm going to put the example in here. Ok. Uh, let's say, Carlos, write reports. Check this out. Carlos, write reports. Actually, this is a third person. Writes reports. Okay, cool. ¿A quién estamos enfatizando ahí? Ok, en este caso estamos enfatizando el subject. ¿Y quién es el subject en este caso? If you take a look in there, it is Carlos, ok? La acción que hace Carlos. Ahora bien, this is an active voice. Lo que como la, la estructura que comúnmente nosotros usamos para la gran mayoría de oraciones, ok? That's the active voice. But what happened in passive voice? Pero ¿qué sucede en la passive voice? Ok. Para la passive voice tenemos una estructura muy diferente, por así decirlo. Ok. Passive voice. Check that out. In here, listen up. In here, we have, ok, we have a subject. Ok. Plus B. Plus verb. Pero este verbo, este verbo. Va a ir in past participle. Verb in past participle. Plus. Object. Le vamos a poner. Le vamos a poner agent. Agent. Ok. ¿Qué dice la definición sobre la passive voice? Dice. Use the passive voice to emphasize. Para enfatizar that the actions are more important than the doors. 
para enfatizar que las acciones son más importantes que el, quien las hace. Ok, que en este caso es el subject. Ahora bien, vamos a trabajar con la misma oración que pusimos al inicio. Carlos writes report. Carlos escribe reportes. Ahora, ¿cómo enfatizar la acción y no más, eh, más la acción y no a Carlos? Look at this. Reports. Ahora bien, dice acá que la estructura lleva el verbo to be cuando una oración es en presente simple. Pero si ustedes recuerdan, decíamos ayer que be en presente simple se divide en am, is, and are. ¿Ok? Remember that. Entonces acá, si decimos reports, ¿qué forma del verbo to be yo voy a utilizar? Am, is, or are. Third person. Third person. Si digo reportes. Mm. Is, it has to be R. Porque ya estamos hablando de un plural. Ok. This is a plural one. Reports are. Ok. And in here. Y acá. Si en la primera oración llevamos el verbo write. Escribir. Acá el verbo. Tiene que ir en pasado participio. ¿Ok? En past participle. ¿Qué significa un verbo en pasado participio? By the way, here it's missing the, this one. Ok, check this out. Written. Esta es la forma participia de este verbo. Reports are written. Ahora bien, necesitamos una, una, una conjunction in here que nos una. Y le vamos a poner by Carlos. Look at this. Reports are written by Carlos. Ok. Si acá decimos Carlos escribe reportes, acá decimos los reportes son escritos por Carlos. So, acá ya tenemos una oración convertida de active voice a passive voice. Entonces, básicamente, esta es la estructura con la cual vamos a estar trabajando eh, esta noche. So, you see? So, this is the way how we create sentences using the passive voice. All right? ¿Qué estamos haciendo acá, entonces? Estamos enfatizando más que todo la acción que hace Carlos. All right? So, in this case, gramaticalmente hablando, acá, Carlos se convierte en algo que se le llama agent. Agent. La idea es. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué? Porque es la persona o es el subject que básicamente hace la acción que estamos enfatizando acá. ¿Ok? So this is the way how we create sentences using passive voice. ¿Ok? Now, before moving on with this information, antes de moverme con esta información, Uh, do you have any question with this? O sea que en ese pasado participio solo se le va a agregar en o, o de qué otra se le agregan los verbos. Depende del verbo. Ahí sí, ahí sí, eh, ahí sí, básicamente va a depender del verbo que se use. Recuerde que hay verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. Y por lo general los verbos regulares son sencillos porque simplemente les agregamos ed para formar pasado y pasado participio. Pero con los verbos irregulares es impredecible. Depende del verbo, así va a ser la forma de pasado participio que va, que va a utilizar. Right? Por ejemplo, si estamos hablando del verbo drink, tenemos drink, forma base, drunk, pasado, drunk, pasado participio. ¿Y así? Entonces, va a depender ahí, más que todo, de los verbos. ¿Ok? ¿Y cómo saber, o cómo, cómo básicamente eh, saber que un verbo, o cuál es la forma pasada participio de un verbo? Pues acá, lastimosamente, solo queda memorizarlos. ¿Ok? Right? Aquí sí ya, eh, esto ya es básicamente memorizarlos. ¿Ok? Right? Si ustedes han visto alguna vez una lista de verbos irregulares, por así decirlo, o una, una lista de verbos regulares en inglés, eh, a ustedes les va a aparecer 
en tres formas diferentes. Les va a aparecer base form, así como está acá, les va a aparecer base form, así, base form, luego simple past y luego past participle. Right? Like this. Así les va a aparecer. Like this. ¿Y a qué se refiere con el past participle? El verbo. Ok. Básicamente es cuando nosotros agregamos el ado, edo, ido al verbo. Ok. Si decimos it, comer, eaten, es el pasado participio. Que en este caso es comido. So you see, bebido, soñado, escrito. All right. So in that case, it depends on the verb. That's the way how you are going to be doing this. This, all right. This, this way. So como les mencionaba, básicamente acá lo único que vamos a hacer es tratar de aprendernos las formas del pasado participio de los verbos para poder crear este tipo de oraciones de manera correcta. All right. Eh, más adelante les voy a mostrar algunos verbos. Traigo algunos verbos ahí en, en forma base y en forma de pasado participio para que ya los vayamos practicando un poco, por así decirlo. All right. Cool. Any question with this people? ¿Alguna pregunta con la estructura de cómo crear eh, esta, esta passive voice? Por el momento uh, vamos... I have the no, uh, icon at late. Uh -huh. And I understand that we are using the past part is the verb mm -hmm. when we are creating a passive voice, yes or no? Ah, repítame la última parte, es que se le escuchó todo robótico. Uh, I guess you have okay. a bad. Okay, okay. Uh, sí, creo que sí le está fallando bastante el internet, Emanuel. Pero listen, listen, listen. Creo que más o menos entendí lo que me quiso, me quiso preguntar. Okay, listen. En la passive voice, básicamente lo que hacemos es, en este caso, solo vamos a trabajar con una estructura. En passive voice existen bastantes estructuras, pero solo vamos a trabajar una. Cuando está en simple present. O sea, la forma del verbo to be está en simple present. Entonces, listen, para crear una passive voice, siempre, listen up, siempre vamos a colocar el verbo to be. ¿Ok? Ese sí, va por, por, digamos, por regla general, que siempre vamos a colocar el verbo to be y el verbo principal que indica la acción lo vamos a colocar en pasado participio. ¿Ok? Es la estructura que les estaba mencionando anteriormente. ¿Right? Entonces, el verbo principal siempre va a ir en pasado participio después del verbo to be. ¿Ok? Like in here. So, en este caso yo puedo decir. Look. The woman steal money. ¿Ok? The woman steals money. ¿Qué estoy queriendo decir en esa oración? The woman steals money. I don't know what I mean. What yeah. means steal? Steal is when you take something without permission. Ah, como robar. Exactly. All right. Uh -huh. That's a steal. Ok. En la, en la oración, vamos, vamos poniendo oraciones bien sencillas acá para que ustedes puedan comprender, ok? Ok. Ahora bien, la forma uh, del pasado participio del verbo steal es stolen, ¿ok? Stolen, 
Ahora bien, esta oración, como les mencionaba, está en Active Voice. Ahora bien, ¿cómo transformarla en Passive Voice? Teniendo en cuenta que lo que se, re, lo que, lo que se enmarca más acá, lo que se enfatiza, es la acción. ¿Ok? Ahora bien, acá yo puedo poner the money. All right, listen up. The money o simplemente money. Ahora bien, si digo money, ¿Es una palabra singular o plural? ¿Singular o plural? Es singular. Es singular. ¿Por qué es singular? ¿Es categorizada como singular? Porque recuerden, la palabra money es incontable. Right? Y toda palabra incontable es categorizada como singular. ¿Ok? Ahora bien. De money, entonces acá vamos a poner is como forma del verbo to be. The money is y ahora el verbo principal en pasado participio. Stolen. Y luego acá, by. Este by es para decir por. Right? By the woman. You see? Y aquí ya tenemos una passive voice example. Right? Ahora bien, uh, Emanuel, no sé si se encuentra todavía en línea. No sé si esto responde a su, a su pregunta. Emanuel, are you there? Hello. All right, I guess you have you have some issues with the internet. But I guess I, I guess All right, I guess you Okay. All right. Listen, Emmanuel. Uh, 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 creo, que no, creo que con usted nos vamos a estar comunicando a través del chat de Zoom. Porque sí, creo que tiene bastante mala la señal. No le, no le, no le, no le logro entender lo que me está diciendo. Porque sí, está bien robótica la, la, la voz. All right. So, every time you ask something, please uh, write it down on, on, on the chat, please. All right? So in that way, I, I can understand what you're what you're asking or what you're saying, please. All right, people. Para los demás, hay alguna pregunta con relación a esta estructura antes de avanzar? Any question with this? Una pregunta, teacher. Yeah, Juan. Go on. Con respecto al verbo, este es el verbo to be, verdad? Exactly, exactly. El verbo, el verbo be. Uh -huh. Ahí, aquí ya no, ya no vamos a poner completa la, la oración como she is, she is, we are, no que solo la terminación. Exactly. Aquí lo que predomina más es la acción que, que la persona hace. ¿Ok? Eso. Aquí sí. no vamos, en, en passive voice no vamos a comenzar con she is. No. Primero la acción, luego el verbo be. Y luego el verbo principal en pasado participio. Y luego quién hace la acción. Ok. Ok. That's the one. All right. Okay, ok, good. Now, let's continue with this. Bien, si no tenemos ninguna otra pregunta, voy a, a eliminar esto. Un second. And let's continue. So, we got some examples in here. Uh, Xiomara, can you please help me out reading that example? Rex is recognized as a prestigious company. Okay, Rex is recognized as a prestigious company. Thank you, Xiomara. So if you take a look in there, Rex is el nombre de una compañía, okay? Rex is recognized as a prestigious company. Si ven ahí, básicamente tenemos el nombre de la empresa y luego el verbo to be. Pero después del verbo to be, tenemos el verbo principal en pasado participio. Ok, is recognized. So, in that case, ahí estamos categorizando básicamente la estructura como una passive voice. All right. Next example. Wendy, help me out, please. Rex 
is rated as one the ten most of prestigious companies. Ah, okay, very good. Rex is rate, rated as one of the ten most prestigious companies. Right? Si ven ahí tenemos igual el verbo to be y el verbo principal con pasado participio. All right? That's the one. I'm looking for a list I wanted to show you. Give me one second. I need to, I wanted to put in here a list of uh, verbs that you can use with this structure. I'm going to be looking. I'm gonna be looking that that thing next. Okay, I don't know if you are writing down that 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 series of examples. No sé si ya tienen captura o están anotando los 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 ejemplos. All right, just give me one second. I'm just looking at. I wanted to send the list of verbs to basic to, to the class to the class. All right, I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be doing that later on. Okay, let's continue. Okay, the passive structures. As I was saying, basically, look, we had two different uh, structures related to to the voice. We have the active voice and we have the passive voice, okay? In the active voice, if you take a look in there, the subject is the one that is emphasized, okay? And basically, we emphasize the subject with the action that the subject does. And in the passive voice is the opposite because the subject is basically, doesn't have, the object of the active voice, right? So that's why in here we got cats eat mice. Los gatos comen ratones, all right? Ah, but if you take a look in the passive voice, la palabra mice, que es el object en la active, se convierte en el subject, all right? Es la que estamos básicamente enfatizando. Then we got mice are eaten by cats. Ah, los ratones son comidos por los gatos. All right. If you take a look in there, this is the way how we do this type of examples. All right. I don't know, people, if you have any question with this. Bien, no sé si tenemos alguna duda en cuanto a esta estructura. All right. This is, this is the way how it works. You take a look in there. Se, se lo ha explicado bien, pero sí está algo engorroso, ¿verdad? porque es la primera vez que tocamos el tema, entonces he sentido un poco. Pero sí se entiende, teacher. Ya, yeah. ¿sabe, sabe qué es lo único que, que, que creo que, digamos, por así decirlo, les va a costar un poco eh, el poder desarrollar oraciones así como de manera un tanto fluida? El hecho de que no conocemos mucho sobre el pasado participio de los verbos. All right. Porque no es lo mismo escribir una oración en presente simple con cualquier verbo que nosotros ya sabemos. Si yo les digo, eh, háganme una oración con el verbo do en un active voice, ustedes lo hacen. Pero en passive voice, ¿cuál es el pasado participio del verbo do? Creo que bien pocos, pocos, pocos lo, sab lo saben. ¿Cuál es el pasado Por participio ejemplo. del verbo do? Si ven, ahí ya, ya existe una barrera. Don. En este caso, el verbo es don. All right? Solo conocemos la forma pasada, que es did, que lo venimos viendo desde el módulo pasado. Right? Pero ya la palabra don ya es muy diferente. ¿sí? So, entonces, eso pienso yo que podría ser parte de, de, de como una, una pequeña barrera que podríamos encontrarnos en right? in, in this case. But, but as I said, I'm gonna give you some examples uh, from some verbs in order for you to help me out with a series of examples. And in that way, we're gonna keep up practicing this, this structure, okay? Cool. I don't know if you have any other question, people. Alguna otra pregunta que tengamos? You know, like, 
textbook question related to this? Vale. Pero, ¿en qué caso se utilizaría este passive voice? ¿En qué caso exactamente, digamos, para, para eh, cuando uno lo está hablando, por ejemplo? Porque según tengo entendido, el passive voice es algo de un libro, si no estoy confundido. Uh, repítame lo último, como dijo? Para relatar algo de un libro o algún hecho que ha pasado, más que todo. Eh, eh, sí, básicamente es para relatar algo, más que todo, que ha sucedido, ¿ok? Eh, y también depende, como mencionaba, de la acción, ¿ok? De la acción y el tiempo en el que estemos hablando, ¿ok? Eh, aquí solo lo vamos a hacer porque es una breve introducción al tema, el tema es bastante amplio pero acá es una breve introducción nada más, lo vamos a hacer en, en Simple Present. Pero esto lo podemos hacer en presente perfecto, futuro con will y con be going to, lo podemos hacer en pasado, pero obviamente no quiero confundirlo si empiezo a escribir oraciones en pasado. All right? so, mejor no, 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 no toco mucho ese, e, e, esa parte, okay? porque si sí, digamos que es un tanto complejo, ¿Ok? Aunque en términos generales no es tan, 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 tan difícil, por así decirlo. ¿Ok? Porque si yo digo, Verónica wrote a poem. Ah, Verónica escribió un poema. Ah, ahí estoy hablando en pasado simple. Ahora bien, ¿cómo hacer esa oración en passive voice, en pasado simple? Ah, look at this. A poem was written by Verónica. It's simple, pero aquí ya vamos conjugando las formas del verbo to be ya en pasado. So you see, entonces para no confundirlos eh, en ese aspecto, lo vamos a dejar solamente con el simple present, con el presente simple. Right? Y creo que para modo de práctica eh, digamos que es, es bastante bueno. Right, that one. At least that one. Now, let's continue and see a, a couple of more examples. So probably you will get to know this. Extra examples, he says. Look at this. Carla, help me out reading this example, please. For is uh, yes, then. Eaten, eaten, eaten by the dog. By the dog. By the dog. Okay, very good. So in this case, in this case, let's remember. Look at this. Recordemos, acá el verbo eat está en pasado participio. Okay? Y esta, esta siempre se va a pronunciar by. Que es básicamente la que da la introducción a el agent o el agente que hace la acción. Okay? De la que estamos hablando. All right, this is the way how it works. Now, next example. Check this one. Uh, let me see, Raquel, are you available? Can you please read this one? Mm, okay, cool. I guess she's not available. Andres, how about you? Yes. Okay, can you please help me out reading that one? Eh, la primera o la segunda? No, the second one. Okay. Cars are driving by employees. Ah, okay, very good. Cars, give me one second. Cars are driven, okay, by employees. Driven es el pasado participio del verbo drive, ¿ok? So that's the past participle of the verb drive. Let's remember that. Let's continue with the next one. Uh, let me see. Xiomara. Sí, 
The payment. The payment. Is, uh -huh. The payment is spent mm -hmm. by the employers. Ah, uh, in this case, to the employers. To the employers. Employers. Payment, the payment is sent to the employers. Ah, uh, el pago es enviado a los empleados. That's what it says, all right? So in this case, if you take a look in there, so we can create sentences like this. Ah, uh, por cierto, people, listen up. Eh, como les mencionaba, que podíamos tener algún cierto grado de, de dificultad en cuanto al uso de los verbos, especialmente los irregulares, al grupo he enviado una lista de verbos, ¿ok? Que ahí los esos verbos, digamos que es la lista un poco más completa, ¿ok? Con relación a los verbos irregulares. Digamos que son los verbos que dan un poco de, más, más de problema. Y a la par de eso, de, de, esa, de, de las líneas que tienen ahí, en la parte que está en rojo, esa es la pronunciación de los verbos. ¿Ok? Just for you to get to know. Y al final tenemos la traducción de cada uno de ellos para que tengamos una idea de qué significa cada uno de, de, de esos verbos, ¿ok? So, let's remember, nosotros vamos a estar usando la tercera línea de esos verbos, que es el past participle, ¿ok? Just for you to keep in mind this, this, this thing. Now, let's continue. Gilberto, help me out reading the next example. The company is recognized. Recognized? As, recon, <laughs> recognized as the best one. Ah, okay, very good. Thank you. The company is recognized as the best one. Ah, la compañía es reconocida como la mejor, it says. All right? So if you take a look in there, tenemos el verbo to be, que en este caso es la forma de is, y el verbo principal en ING, right? So, básicamente, por esa parte así, es que esta es considerada como una passive voice. Ok. This is like the way. Cool. Just before to continue in, uh, do you have any question? Antes de continuar, ¿tenemos alguna pregunta con relación a estos ejemplos? No questions? Okay, perfect. Let's move. Let's move. Check this out. Verbs to create examples. Aha, Gilberto. Yo no estoy agregado al grupo, creo yo. ¿Y eso? ¿No está en el grupo de WhatsApp? Creo que no. Uh -huh. No se preocupe. Ya voy, a, ya voy a pasar asistencia, de hecho, en un, en un rato más. Y ahí le voy a mandar el link a través de Zoom para que usted se pueda unir a, a, al grupo de WhatsApp, ¿ok? Ok. Vale, perfecto. That's the way how we're going to be doing. Uh, check, check this out. It says, people, verse to create the example. Acá les traigo algunos verbos lo, con los cuales nos vamos a basar para crear algunos ejemplos. All right? And, and we can work easily. So we got the main verb and the past participle of the verb. We got the verb eat. Listen up, eat, the base form. Eaten, that's the past participle, okay? Eaten. Then we have drink. Drink. The past participle of that verb is drunk. Drunk. Okay. Then we have recognize. Recognize. In past participle, that verb is recognize. Con T al final. Recognized. Okay, listen up. Recognized. Next. Make. Make. And the past participle is made. Made. Okay. Change. Listen up. Change. And the next one is change. Changed. All right. So this is pretty cool what we got in here. So basically, con estos verbos creo que podemos hacer una serie de 
ejemplos, ¿ok? Bien, como ya he preguntado, si vamos comprendiendo y la gran mayoría está en silencio, pues debo suponer que todo está quedando súper claro, ¿ok? ¿vale? Como la noche. All right. Uh, and I want to, to, to know, people, if, if everything is okay with this okay? Ahora bien, quiero que me escojan, listen up, quiero que me escojan dos verbos de esa lista, esta pequeña lista que tengo ahí, dos, escojanme dos, listen up, y quiero que me elaboren una active voice, un ejemplo en active voice, y ese mismo ejemplo, transformelo en passive voice, ¿ok? Tal y como los ejemplos que puse al principio cuando estaba explicándolo. Like that. Right? Let's do it. Hagámoslo entonces. Entonces van a ser cuatro oraciones en total. ¿Ok? Four sentences. Let's do it. Recuerden la oración en la active voice tiene que estar en simple present. ¿Ok? Let's go and help me out by telling me when you finish, okay? Let's continue. Porque cuatro me perdí. Hola. Porque cuatro oraciones dijo. Ah, cuatro porque una. Vaya, me voy a escoger dos verbos de los que están ahí en pantalla. Va. Sí. Me va a escribir una oración usando la active voice, oración normal, y esa misma ah, active sí. voice me la transformará. En passive voice, ¿ok? Ya con el verbo ah, sí. en pasado participio, ¿ok? Entonces sí. ahí ya tenemos dos oraciones del mismo verbo. Gracias. Ok, let's go. Help me out, I mean, by telling me when you finish. Si tienen alguna duda, háganmelo saber, ¿ok? Por lo general, este tipo de estructuras como la passive voice es más que todo utilizada para documentos formales, right? O por así decirlo, eh, casos en los cuales se tienen que presentar en corte, por así decirlo, right? All right. In the meantime, mientras ustedes hacen las oraciones, voy a pasar asistencia. It's time. All right. Andrés Joel. Present. Ah, okay. Very good. Carlos Mauricio. Presente. All right. Cindy Melanie. A ver, si no se Stephanie Michelle. Okay. Sí, con este. Ah, ya, no, which is working. Ivania Jamilet. Presente, Chico. Ok, lo voy a ver. Jacqueline Patricia. Okay, so Joana Saraí. Is there Joana? Okay. Jorge Alberto. All right, he's not here. Jose Edgar. Edgar. No. A Juan Emanuel. Present. Ah, ok, very good. Let's move. Juan Gilberto. Present teacher. Ok, very nice. Julio Alberto. Okay. 
Julio Cesar. Present. Okay, good. Karen Beatriz. Present. Ah, okay, very good. Let me see. Uh, Carla Lisset. Present. All right. Raquel Stephanie. Present. Excellent. Veronica Arely. Present. All right. Wendy Yanilet. Present. Very good. Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, William Ernesto. No here. And then we have Xiomara Elizabeth. Present. Okay. Nice. Carlos Jose. Present teacher. Okay, cool. And the last one, Reinaldo Chavez. Which is not here. Bueno, no está acá. All right. Do you finish, guys? ¿Ya terminamos? Finish, teacher. All right. Give me one second. All right. Perfect. No se espera a los demás, entonces. Let me see. Karen, I guess you finish. Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. ¿Quién más terminó? All right, so let's continue. Puede compartir de nuevo los verbos que estamos utilizando. Yes, of course. Give me one second. Here you have. Okay, I guess most of you have already finished. Creo que ya la gran mayoría terminó. All right, let's keep going. Carlos, can you please help me out reading yours? Uh, Chavez. Sure, teacher. Uh, the first one, uh, Carlos eats pizza. Is the, the active. active. Okay. The active, uh, and the passive form is pizza are eat, eating by Carlos. Repeat again. Uh, pizza are eating. Uh, but pizza is singular, mister. Uh -huh. Pizza is, exactly. sorry, the pizza is eating by Carlos. Exactly, that's the way. Okay. And, the, and another verb is make. Okay. Susana make hamburger. Okay, make yeah. hamburger. As in, 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 in active form and the passive form, hamburger is made by Susana. Ah, okay, very good. Yeah, that's the way. Thank you, Carlos. Let okay. Who's next? Karen? Okay. My examples are similar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Maria eat pasta. Mm -hmm. Pasta is eaten by Maria. Okay. 
Juan drinks coffee. Mm -hmm. Coffee is drunk by Juan. <laughs> okay, very good. Coffee is drunk by Juan. There you go. Thank you, Karen. Now, let me see who has finished. Somebody told me that has already finished. Ivania. Tell me out, Ivania. Eh, eran cuatro, ¿verdad? Yes. Pero tenían que ser de la tu manera. Active and passive. Okay. <coughs> um, Sonia changed her car. Um, the car. Repeat. Okay, the car. No, uh, Sonia changed her car. Ajá. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, her car. In this case, the car, the car, the car. Change. Ah, the verb is missing. El verbo to be le falta ahí. Es change. Ah. Okay, repítame otra vez. Sonia changed her no. car. Okay, now the active, the passive, the car. <clears throat> okay, the car, Sonia, uh, I mean, uh, Ivani. Change. Like this? Yeah. Bueno, no tomé ningún verbo de eso. Ah, sí, change. El último. Change. Uh -huh. <laughs> ¿Así lo tiene? ¿O hay algo más sí, que le tengo que agregar? El nombre. Sonia. Like this. Ahí está. Hmm. Ok, listen up. To start. Para comenzar, aquí nos falta el verbo to be, Ivania. Ok. ¿Cómo así? Look at this. Sería ir Sonia. Ok, look, look, look. Primero vamos a colocar la acción o el object que por lo menos en la active voice podríamos tener. En este caso sería the car. All right, that's okay. Pero acá, después de la palabra the car, la frase the car, acá necesitamos el verbo to be. Is. Ok. The car is changed. Y acá necesitamos by. Is it? The car is okay. changed by Sony. And you got the example, okay? Y aquí ya tiene el ejemplo. Perfect. That was the first example, right? Ese era el primer ejemplo, ¿cierto? Sí. Okay, read the second one. <clears throat> so yeah, we have 18 dinner already. Okay, in the passive? We have eight dinner already. Mm, we have eight dinner already. Nosotros hemos comido la cena. Ya hemos comido la cena. But in this case, si lo dice así, no hemos incluido el verbo to be. Tendría que ser we are. En este caso, recordemos, no comenzamos con we. Vamos a comenzar primero mencionando la acción que básicamente se encuentra en la active voice. Para eso, lea la primero la active voice. Sería the dinner. Ah, ok, the dinner. Is 18. <clears throat> is 18. Uh -huh. Already. Okay. The dinner is eaten already. Okay. All right. So we can put this one or it's optional, okay? This might be optional, but this is the way how it works. Pero esta es la forma en cómo trabaja. ¿Sí ve? La parte acá que se está remarcando más, 
es que es, ah, es lo de la cena, right? Right? In this case, it's written, so básicamente eso es el verbo en pasado participio. Okay? This is the way how we work with this. Cool. Thank you, Ivania, for your uh, examples. Somebody else? Yeah. Okay, Xiomara. He drinks orange juice. Uh -huh. Orange orange juice is drunk drunk by he. Okay, ahí lo vamos a colocar by him. ¿Así lo tiene? Mm, by him. Yeah. Y la otra, I change my cell phone. Cell phone is changed by me. Ah, okay. The cell phone is changed by me. Okay, very good. That's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Sumara. Okay, who else is finished? ¿Quién más ha terminado ya? Yo. Okay, Wendy. Go. Bye. Uh, children drink milk. Ajá. As if uh, the milk is drunk by children. Ah, okay, very good. The milk is drunk by children. There you go. That's a cool example. Thank you, Wendy. Somebody else? Uh, Carlos Gamero, did you finish the examples? The, secre the secretary make reports. Reports are made by secretary. No, okay, very good. Carlos drink coffee. Mm -hmm. The coffee are drunk by Carlos. In this case, it has to be the coffee is drunk. Porque la palabra coffee es, es incontable, por lo tanto es singular, okay? All right, cool. Let's continue. Verónica. Ah, oh, no, give me one second. Carlos, okay. uh, give me one second. Carlos, do you read the second example? Yes. Ah. ah, okay, okay. Cool. The secretary y la otra ahorita de ahorita. Ah, okay, cool. Verónica. She makes pizza. Uh -huh. Pizza is made by she. Ah, en este I caso ya, ya no sería she. Sería? Tenía esa duda. Yes. Ahí ya sería, ya sería her. Porque ya es un object. Ok. Yeah. Pizza is made by her. La otra, I drink coffee and coffee is drunk by me. <laughs> ok, very good. Stuff is drunk by me. All right. This is pretty, pretty weird, but that's the way. Okay. There you go. Who else is missing? Uh, let me see. Who más he ha terminado? Andres, do you have your examples? Andres, are you there? Está ahí. Hello. Okay. There's no there. Ah, da, 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 da. You see, Carla, are you there? Hello, Miss. Okay. All right. Emmanuel. I'm here. Okay, Manuel, can you please read your examples? Okay. Okay, let, let, let's do the something. Boys drink 
de Guay, de Passy ah. Boys, de Guay, are drunk by the boys. Okay, the wine is drunk by the by the boys in this case. Is correct? Yeah, I mean, but in that case, the, the, the wine. The, ah, okay. The the wine is the voice drunk. is plural. No. Exactly. La palabra voice is plural, pero como al final no afecta el verbo to be. El verbo to be tiene que estar en en, en eh, singular en este caso por la palabra wine. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. I'm going to modify. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, the second is Amazon are recognized by their clients. And the passports, their clients. Uh -huh. Are recognized Amazon. Are recognized by Amazon. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I changed the present, the present, the present form is their client recognizes Amazon. Uh -huh, the client recognizes Amazon, okay. And the passive voice is Amazon mm -hmm. are recognized by uh, their clients. Uh, in this case, Amazon is recognized. Is. Yes, Again. porque la palabra uh, Amazon ahí es, es singular. ¿Por qué? Porque okay, solo okay. tenemos solo tenemos un Amazon, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's why. Cool, Emmanuel. Thank you. Let me see okay. who else. What else is missing? Uh, Michelle is still working. Carla didn't reply. Uh, Raquel, are you busy? ¿Está ocupada, Raquel? I guess she's busy. Andres, are you are you there now? Estaba ahí ahora. Okay, she's. I mean, he's not there. Uh, no, 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 no. Raquel, Michelle is in a meeting. Okay, no, cool. Teacher. All right, Gilberto, let's go. Elena X X. Pupusa. Pupusas is eaten by Elena. En este caso, como dijo pupusas, es plural, entonces de ahí eliminémosle is y pongámosle are. Pupusas are eaten. Exactly. By okay. Elena. Yeah, we did. Ok. Eh. Michelle drink Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Blind Coca Cola. Is is drunk by Michelle. Ah, the Coca Cola is drunk by Michelle. La Coca Cola es bebida por Michelle. Ah, okay. No es cierto, no es cierto. Pretty weird, but it's not cierto. Thank you, thank you, uh, Gilberto. You did it excellent. Cool people. So let's continue with this. Let's continue with this because I guess the rest of these people are not there. Or probably are busy. Okay. So let's go. Let's go to the manual in there because now that we know a little bit about the passive boys, let's go over the manual and you will find out some very interesting things in that case. Give me one second. I'm putting the presentation again. Teacher, se ve cansado. Give me one second. Lo que pasa es que acá suelen haber como unos, unos cositas como animalitos y se me ha metido uno en el ojo. Entonces me ha estado llorando el ojo porque <laughs> arde, me arde la, la vista. Entonces, ah, estoy así como que, como cuando se echa, no sé, por accidente, sal en el ojo y queda como, como ardido. Sí, sí, imagino. Yeah. Ah, eso es lo malo del invierno a veces que, que trae esos, 
un montón de animalitos and things like that. But anyways, this is the one. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? Ah, ya, me missing here. Okay, it's gonna be here. Listen up. In here, what we have? We have a short conversation related to the main topic that we are discussing right now. Dice, listen to the teacher read the conversation, then practice with a partner, okay? This is a, conver a conversation between Jessica and Daniel, okay? This is between Jessica and Daniel. What are we gonna do? Vamos a hacer la, la misma dinámica que hemos hecho siempre. I'm gonna practice the conversation for a moment, okay? Then if you have any question with the vocabulary, let me know uh, uh, later, okay? After I finish uh, reading. It says Daniel, look at this. So Jessica, what does your company do? So Jessica, what does your company do? It says Jessica at Rex. At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. We produce clothes for kids. It says Daniel, I see. I see. And uh, what is Rex known for? And what is Rex known for? It says, Rex is known for, listen up, Rex is known for the modern designs, the modern designs and the quality of the clothes and the quality of the clothes we make, we make. It says, Daniel, great. And uh, are you happy to work for Rex? Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? It says, Jessica, absolutely. Absolutely. Rex is recognized. Rex is recognized as a very prestigious company as a very prestigious company their personnel is important for them their personnel is listen up uh important for them it says daniel congratulations jessica Congratulations, Jessica. You are right. You're right. Rex is rated as one of the most 10 prestigious companies in El Salvador. It says, Congratulations, Jessica. You are right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay. From this conversation, do you have any question? ¿Alguna pregunta con relación a esta conversación? Something that might not be clear. Clear, teacher. Everything clear? Okay, perfect. All right. What are we going to do with this thing? Listen up. It's 9.29. Vamos a, a, vamos a practicarla por unos cinco minutos. Luego vamos a volver acá. La vamos a repetir. And then we're going to do a series of exercises. Vamos a hacer un par de ejercicios que están luego de la conversación. Ok, dos questions and this one. Ok, but what really matters for you right now is this conversation. Give me one second. Ok. All right, this is the one. Bien, como todos tienen el manual, como supongo que ya todos lo tienen, uh, I'm going to stop sharing this. Voy a dejar de compartir. Y nos vamos a ir a trabajar en los workout rooms. Los breakout rooms. Let me see. Uh, 
Carla, are you there? Continue there. Necesito saber quiénes están activos, people, para saber quiénes son los que podemos, con los que podemos practicar, ¿ok? Yes, aquí estoy. Solamente termino esta llamada, teacher. Lo siento. Ah, ok. All right. Perfect. Te digo. Raquel. Are you there? I am. I'm here, teacher. Ah, yeah, but you're the one that is going to be listening, right? Eso es lo que va a estar como bien, pues, yeah, it's true. Andrés, are you there? Andrés, okay, Andrés is not there. Emanuel, Emanuel is having issues with the internet. Yes, I am here. Could you I, hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I listen to you. And Michelle, Michelle is still in a meeting, so she cannot do it. So let me see. Wendy, are you there? Wendy. Hello. Hmm. Where is Wendy going? That's weird. I thought she was there. Puede poner por favor la imagen. Necesito más tu en la captura. Ah, okay. Perfect. Right. There you go. Yeah, gracias. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm going to make groups of three because there are some of you that are not going to be participating. Give me one second. All right, just give me one second. I'm going to put the people who are in here. Okay, cool. Let me see, I cannot be with this person. But let me say, what is that? All right, so I'm, I'm just doing some things, people. Give me one second. All right, Carla, let's say it on my mind. I'm going to move this to number one. I'm going to move this one to number two. Give me one second, people. I'm just doing some things just to put the people, the right people into the practice. Number four. In Andres way, I'm gonna put it in room number five. Okay, cool. So I'm going to make the assignments and now let's go to practice. Okay. Ah, Wendy is there. Okay. Wendy. I put Michelle over there. Uh, Carla. Give me one second. The thing is that some of you are not participating. So that's why I got it like that. Okay, put it like this. Okay, let's go to work. You're gonna have five minutes and then we're gonna come back in here, okay? Let's go, let's accept it in there, please. Let's go over it, people. Sorry. 
So, so Jessica, what does your company do? Address, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex now for? Rex is known for the modern designs and the quality of clothes we make. Great. And are you? Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is recon recognized. Recognized. Recognize as a very prest prestigious, Pre pre prestigious, prestigious mm -hmm. company. Their person is important, important for them. Mm -hmm. okay. Congratulations, Jessica. You're right. Rex is rated as one of the more of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay. Cambiamos papeles. Yes. Yeah. So Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex. We produce clothes for kids. I see. And uh, what is Rex known for? Rex is a uh, is known for the the modern des designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And uh, are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is recognized as a very prestigious. The, the personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. You're right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay. So, Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex now for? Rex is now for the modern design and the quality of the clothes we make. Right. And are you happy to work, Rex? Absolutely. Rex is our concept as a very prestigious company. The person is in person for them. Happy to work for Rex. Absolutely. Rex is recognized as a very prestigious company. Their personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. Your right, Rex is right. As one of the thing most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay. Personal. Important for 10. Congratulations, Jessica. You're right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay. Mejoramos. <laughs> un poco. <laughs> Vaya, hoy soy Daniel. So, Jessica, what does your company do? At rest with production, clothes of heat. I see. And what is Rex now for? 
less I know for the most days and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex, uh, Rex is recognizing as a very prestigious company. Their person is important for them. Teacher, we're ready. Are you ready? Okay, man, let's go. Let's go to the practice. Give me one second. I'm not going to start this. Ah, yeah, I'm missing it. Let's go. I'll see you there, man. All right, so everybody's coming. So we're going to read that and we're going to continue with a couple of exercises uh, just if we have time. Just for people that are, are connected. What happened with the other ones? Mm -hmm. What happened with the rest of the people? All right, let's just start. Let's just start. Mientras, mientras tanto, que se unan los demás luego. Uh, Carlos Gamero, who were you practicing with? With Miss Ivania Jamilet. Ah, with Ivania. Okay, perfect. I'm going to put the presentation. Um, from the manual, give me one second so you can read from there. All right, there you go. There you have it. Carlos. Okay. So, Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex now for? Rex is now for the model design and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is for Kansai. is a very mm -hmm. prestigious company. The personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. You're right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ivania, and thank you, Carlos. You did it excellent. Now, let me see. Xiomara, who were you practicing with? With me. Uh, ah, sí, with con él. No sé cómo se llama. Okay, no Carlos. Me <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Empiezo, ¿verdad? Sí. Uh, so, Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex known for? Rex is known for the modern designs and the quality for the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is recognized as a very prestigious company. The personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica, and you're right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Oh, okay, very good. So thank you, eh, falta thank you Mara. Uh, it was, was it Emmanuel with you? Emmanuel, uh -huh, está, está con nosotros. Okay, okay cool. Uh, Carlos, help Emmanuel. Okay. So, Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex now for? Rex is known for the modern designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is, is recognized 
as a very prestigious company, they personally is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. You are right. Red is rated as one of the 10 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Okay, very good. Thank you, people. Thank you for your participation. Now, Juan, eh, let me see, Juan Gilberto. Yeah, I mean, Gilberto, who were you practicing with? From Veronica Ayala. Now, okay, cool. Let's go. I want to listen to you. ¿Lista, Verónica? Sí, comience. Ok. So, Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see, and what is Rex now for? Rex is now for the more designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is recognized as a very prestigious company. Their personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. Congratulations, repeat. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jessica. Your right, Rex, is right as one of the 10 most prestigious company in El Salvador. Okay, very good. Thank you, Gilberto and Veronica. Now, Carla. Okay. Who were you practicing with? Um, con Wendy. Ah, with well, Wendy, right? Amigo. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Brian. Usted Daniel, Jessica. Perdón, Carla. <laughs> Brian. Se está metiendo Soy mucho yo. en el papel. <laughs> okay, good. Let's go, let's go. So Jessica, what what does so what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex now for? Rex is now for the modern design and the quality of the clothes we make. Right. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is Rex. ¿Cómo se dice, compañero? Eh, Recognizes. Recognize. Recognize. Rex is recognized and uh -huh. recognized. as a very prestigious company. Their personal is important for them. Congratulations, Jessica. Yours right, Red is writing. Rating. Rating as one of the 10 most prestigious company in El Salvador. Okay, very good. There you go. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Wendy. You did it excellent. Is somebody, uh, is, any, is any missing? Hay algún grupo que me he saltado, alguno que falte? All right, that was, that was okay for everybody. Okay, cool. So we have finished already at least this part okay now before the time finishes uh, and because i don't want to be uh, uh, you know like using this as unconcluded let's go over here listen up vamos a hacer esta parte dice say if the statements below are true or false si son verdaderas vamos a escribir true y si son falsas vamos a escribir false over here dice People know Rex produce clothes with modern designs for kids. 
Is that true? People know Rex produces clothes with modern designs for kids. Las personas saben que Rex produce ropa con diseños modernos para niños. De acuerdo a la conversación que ustedes estuvieron practicando, ¿es esto cierto o falso? True. Is it true? All right, look at this. So, básicamente, acá está diciendo, ¿ve? At Rex, we produce clothes for kids. Y acá lo vuelven a remarcar. Dice, Rex is known for the modern designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Okay, and here, look. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is part of it. All right? It's part of it. So, in this case, this one is? True. 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 All right. Next. Carla, help me out reading number two, please. People know red manufacturers. Manufacturers, uh huh. Quality clothes of kids. Okay. Las personas saben, okay. Dice, las personas saben la calidad de manufactura, all right. Que Rex hace en cuanto a la ropa para los niños. Is that true or false? False. Why false? ¿Por qué falso? Ajá. Why is it false? Si creen que es falso, porque es verdadero. Mm. According to the, to, the, to the conversation. Esto es siempre de acuerdo a la conversación, ¿ok? Sí. Ajá. All right, Verdadero, so, creo, teacher. Okay, let me see. Rex is known for the modern designs, he says. It's known for the modern designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Ah, Rex es conocido por los diseños modernos, la calidad de ropa que nosotros hacemos. Okay, ahora bien, como dice acá. People know Rex manufactures quality clothes for kids. So this one becomes in true, right? So this one se convierte en verdadero. So let's write down two over there. Next, it says, people see Rex as a prestigious company. True or false? True. Why true? True. Okay, that's true. There you go. Okay, basically, it's conocida as a prestigious prestigio. company. There you go. People rate Rex as one of the 20 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Is that true or false? False. Why false? Por qué falso? The 10 most prestigious. Ah, because in the conversation it talks about the 10, the top 10, right? And in here it says, as one of the 20 most prestigious companies, right? Now, and it has to be not like, like that, okay? It has to be as the way it is. There you go. So basically, we have finished with this information. <laughs> exactly. So we have finished this part. And... Uh, let me see, uh, by tomorrow, let me see, by Monday, you're gonna complete this one. Yeah, on Monday, you're gonna complete this one for me. Okay. Vamos a dejar esta parte, let me see, lo vamos a dejar para. Let me see how to use Passy Boys. 
Yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing that we have been doing. Es lo mismo que hemos estado haciendo, lo, hemos estado desarrollando, solo que acá ya son oraciones un poco más, un poco más completas. Dice, look at this. I'm, I'm just going to read the headline, okay? This, we're going to do it this on Monday as a feedback. Complete the statements using the passive voice of the verse in parentheses. Compare, I said up, compare your answers with a partner, it says. Y vamos a leer una para que tengamos la idea de cómo lo vamos a hacer, ¿ok? By, by Monday. Dice, our company is considered all right, the best manufacturer of brooms in the country. Number two, it says, our products, nuestros productos. In here, how would you put in here, people? ¿Cómo escribirían acá ustedes? Right. Right. Uh... Give me one second. Okay, our products. This year? Are retail. Ah, okay, cool. Our products are greater, all right, or retail. So you see, our products are rated as five of the most popular in the United States. Okay. So this action no recae, okay. In, the, in a person, in a specific person, recae básicamente en el libro de productos, right? Products, that's what it says over there. Then we have number three. Uh, let's see, Veronica, help me out with number three, please. Veronica? Mm. No sé, Ticha, necesito ayuda. Ok, ok. Vamos a ver. Primero que nada, la cena. Tenemos que identificar si la primera parte está en singular o está en plural. Ok. ¿Cómo lo vamos a identificar? Dice, our customer service agents. Ahí está la clave. En la palabra agents. Esa parte. The es agent, ¿es singular plural. o plural? Plural. Ah, entonces, ¿cuál es la forma del verbo to be que va a ir ahí? Are. That's right, es correcto. Our customer service agents are. Y luego acá el verbo en pasado participio. Ok. Y en este caso el verbo, lo que es. Acá al verbo para hacerlo de presente, porque este es presente. Para hacerlo de presente a pasado participio, que es lo único que agregamos acá. Lo, la de. Like that. Perceived. ¿Sí, sí? Por eso les mencionaba que los verbos regulares tienden a ser un poco más sencillos que los verbos irregulares. Por eso es que les compartí, ok, el link. No, básicamente el, el archivo en WhatsApp, right? en el grupo de WhatsApp y así pues ustedes puedan darles una darle una leída cuando ustedes tengan un poco de tiempo, ¿ok? That's pretty cool. Para la próxima clase vamos a terminar con esto y algún y otra otra actividad más que, que está pendiente con el uso de la past voice, right? Uh, what is my suggestion, people? Listen up. En este tipo de de temas cuando son un tanto desconocidos para nosotros lo único que les aconsejo es que podamos practicar un poco más, ¿ok? Si con esa lista que yo les envié, ustedes ya reconocen algunos verbos en pasado participio, please, try, try to practice with that. Traten de practicar un poco, ¿ok? Que recuerden que el uso de la acción que se hace right, en una passive voice, básicamente lo que se enfatiza es lo que se hace, no quién hace la acción, sino lo que se hace. Mientras que la active voice básicamente es quien hace la acción, right? En este caso sería el subject. Let's remember that. Uh, recordemos igual, si tenemos alguna duda, algún inconveniente, alguna pregunta con relación a ello, me lo pueden hacer en el grupo, no hay ningún problema. And before we go, antes de pasar asistencia y podernos retirar, lesson, remember, all right, remember. Tenemos mañana y tenemos el domingo para ponernos al día en cuanto a las tareas. 
no lo vayan dejando toda última hora, people, right? Eh, lo menciono para que luego no, me va, no los vaya a estar estresando a ustedes cuando empiece a bombardearlos con mensajes, right? Y recordemos que básicamente ya el martes estaríamos terminando la primera semana, lo que significa que ya solo faltan dos clases, right? Just, just two classes. All right. So, ¿hay alguna pregunta antes de pasar a asistencia? ¿Something? ¿Algo que ustedes quieran agregar o algo que no hayan comprendido del todo? ¿O oh, everything is okay? ¿Está todo bien? ¿Everything clear? No, okay. Está claro como a la Ay. noche. Como... <risa> I guess everything is okay. Ya vamos a ver cuando nos enfrentemos a los ejercicios. Right. Especially in the platform. But anyways, I'm going to pass the attendance list, people. Ok, voy a pasar lista de asistencia. Eh, no sé por qué final de mes siempre, 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 siempre hay muchos que, que sí están con full de trabajo, right? This is the first time, esta es la primera vez que veo que estoy con 10 estudiantes en un grupo y tres de ellos, ya, yeah, dos, tres de ellos, uh, digamos que solo están de oyente. Wow. Ok, cool. Let's start over. It says, Andrés Joel. Andrés, are you there? Ok, he's not there. Um, Carlos Mauricio. Present teacher. Ok, perfect. Cindy Melanie. All right, he's not here. Let's continue. Stephanie Michelle. Michelle, no, she got disconnected, but she's just she's, she's working, it says. Ivania Jamilet. Present teacher. Okay, cool. Uh, Ivania, it was with you yesterday, right? In the 10 minutes feedback? Yes, I did. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Patricia. Okay, she's not here. Give me one second. Joanna Sarai. All right, she's not there. Jorge Alberto. Okay, she's not here. Give me one second. Okay, next. Actually, Joanna, Joanna. No, me, Joanna is not here. Okay, next. Jose Elgar is not here. Juan Emanuel. Present. Okay, cool. Juan, uh, I would like I would like to stay with you in the 10 minutes feedback, okay? Is that possible for you today? Emanuel, ¿es that posible for you today? Bueno, nos vamos a quedar unos 10 minutos de retroalimentación, ¿ok? So, no se me vaya ahí. Let's continue. Juan Gilberto. Present teacher. Ok, nice. Next, Julio Alberto. No, he's not here. Julio César. Ok, it's not here. Karen Beatriz. I think she got problems with the internet. Carla Lisette. Present. Ok, very good. Next, Raquel Stephanie. Present. Ok, excellent. Verónica Arlene. Present. Ok, very good. Wendy Jamilet. Present. Ok, nice. Let's continue. William Ernesto. No here. Xiomara Elizabeth. Present. Ah, ok, very good. Carlos José. No ve. No ve. Probably he got problems with the internet. And Reinaldo Chavez, which is not here. 
Okay, people, let's see you on Monday in another video conference, okay? Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you had a good one and see you on Monday, okay? Bye-bye, people. Adios. All right, see you. Uh, Emmanuel, no problem. We're gonna be texting each other, okay? We're gonna be doing like through, through, through chat. So let's just stay with me, okay? This is just to see if you have any questions, Emmanuel, okay? Cool, for the rest, have a wonderful night, people. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'm asking, now I'm gonna see you on, uh, on Monday. All right, Emmanuel. Cool. According to what we were doing today, all right, about the uses of the passive voice and the active voice in simple present, do you have any question? So I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, the problem is it's not common to use the this topic in the in the day, for example, in the quotidian. Routine. Exactly. Es bien poco el uso que se le da, eh, digamos, como uso cotidiano. Esto es más que todo como para casos formales, por así decirlo, en situaciones bastante formales en las cuales nosotros no queremos enfatizar en lo que hace el sujeto, sino que más bien en lo que eh, enfatizamos más es en la acción. All right. En eso es lo que enfatizamos más en la acción que al, un, uno o más sujetos han realizado. ¿Ok? En eso es lo que se enfatiza un poco más. Otra, otra forma que también tenemos que tener en cuenta es que básicamente lo que hacemos uh, es que let me see, agregamos el verbo to be all right, a la oración principal. All right, so that was that was part of what we were doing. For example, look at this, Emmanuel. Decíamos que en la active voice, la estructura es sencilla. Tenemos un subject, un verb y un complemento. Okay, pues podría decir, por ejemplo, I play soccer all right ahora bien en la passive voice en la passive voice all right in the passive voice it goes like this look subject class take this out in that case b Plus verb, but the break has to be in past participle. Verb plus past participle plus complement. All right. Entonces, esta es la estructura que por lo generalmente utilizamos en una passive voice. Okay. This way. Ahora bien. Si yo digo acá en la active voice, I play soccer. Look at this. En la passive voice, yo voy a decir la acción primero. Soccer. Y luego tenemos is played. All right, played. ¿Por qué played? All right, porque básicamente acá estamos hablando de jugar, right? So played es la forma pasada participia del verbo. Soccer is played by me. Okay. Podemos hacerlo de este modo. Entonces acá, ¿a qué se refiere eh, con el uso de la passive voice? A, como usted dice, no es que sea bien común, pero solemos usar este tema, right? En términos legales, en algunas ocasiones.
No sé si tiene alguna pregunta adicional, Emanuel. Emanuel. Sorry, I was mute. Uh, <laughs> there are different ways to use it in different times. For example, present. Exactly. Past. Past, present perfect, past perfect, future. Present perfect progressive. Las podemos usar de diferentes formas, right? Depending on the active voice. Va a depender de la voz activa y cómo nosotros escribamos en la forma. Exactly, también del contexto. And also depends on the context. Le digo. Pero en este, como les decía, nos vamos a enfocar nada más en el uso del simple present, right? Para ir despacio yes. y más adelante vamos a volver a ver este tema. Ok, entonces ahí sí va a ser un poco más profundo. Right. This is the way how we form this passive voice. So, ¿hay alguna otra pregunta adicional, Emanuel? Nosotros no, es clear. Ok, cool. Nosotros inclusive usamos eso en algunas ocasiones. Usamos la passive voice. Cuando usted dice, ah, yo he visto esta situación antes. All right, so por lo general, eh, ahí estamos usando, right, the structure, ok. O cuando dice usted, ah, las personas son llevadas a diferentes destinos, son llevadas. Ahí estamos usando el verbo to be más la forma pasada participia del verbo. Entonces ahí estamos hablando de manera como un passive voice structure, all right. Cool, Emanuel. ¿Hay alguna otra duda, so, Emanuel? Ajá. So, in, the, in that case, uh, the sentence is um, the people Ajá. is All right, in that case, carried. Uh, the people are, are. Because people is plural, remember. The people are, are the carried. People are. Yes. Ajá. Al carrot. Uh -huh. Cuando eso sucede así, puede colocar el agent. El agent se le conoce como a un agente, o sea, quien hace la acción. Por ejemplo, ahí puede ponerse o, 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 o poner, uh, por ejemplo, by y luego mencionar el agente. All right. Read the example again. Le da el ejemplo de nuevo, el que tenía. Okay. Right. The people are carried by by me. No, okay, that's good. The people are carried by me. So you see, all the people are carried by the police officer, or the people are carried by, and mention one specific place where that person is. Okay. Any other question? It's clear. No, no. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. There you go. Entonces, lo único que faltaría es igual siempre ir al día con el con las plata, la plataforma, con las tareas de la plataforma. Creo que este fin de semana, pues, bien se pueden poner así como, como you know, like, en algún rato para poder avanzar, ya que, pues, el día martes ya estaremos combinando con la primer videoconferencia, right? Y recordamos que, pues, igual. Las cinco tareas tienen que estar subidas para ese día a más tardar a medianoche. Okay, creo que Perfect. Comencé. I'm going to try to complete uh, before to the weekend. Perfect, man. Perfect. Even though with you, I know I'm not going to have any problem. But it's, it's, it's good to hear, to hear that, okay? There you go. Cool. So, Emanuel, eh, no sé si hay alguna otra duda, inconveniente, pregunta. Thank you for the, no. the review of the topic. Okay, perfect. Thank you to you, man. Thank you to you for, for staying with me, okay? No, it's clear uh, in that moment. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you perfect. for the moment that you are... Uh, I appreciate the time, extra overtime you are applying. No, right? no problem, mister. It's a pleasure. You know, like just to clarify any question that you might have, okay? 
Okay. Perfect, mister. See you on Monday, Emmanuel. Take care, okay? Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, me too. Okay, man. Bye-bye.